Um, to guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. Remember, your soul is your mind, your emotions, everything, your will. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Like I just said seconds ago, if your life feels chaotic, there might be a heart issue. And the issue isn't that you, don't, you have a bad heart and you're a bad person. It's because maybe we haven't been guarding our heart the way we really should be. In other words, some of you need to understand that to guard your heart, you need to put a fence, not a wall. Pain will make you put a fence, put a wall in your life instead of a fence. And here's the difference, church. The difference between a fence and a wall is this, is a fence always has a gate. And I can let the right things in and I can let the wrong things out. But so many times, we, we, because of pain and because of destruction, because all these things, what we think we got to do is I got to put up a wall. And therefore, because I put up a wall, I'll never get to let the bad things out in my life that I need to let go of because I got a wall. And I'm keeping that wall and I'm not letting anything come in. But how are, you so be, how are you going to be transformed if the Spirit of God can't come in? How can you say, God, I want to be brand new. God, do something new in my life if I'm always putting a wall because of what happened to me? Because of what happened in my past. Because of this situation. And instead of putting fences, we create walls. But I'm here to let you know that if you want a healthy soul, put a fence. Create a fence around your heart. You guard it with a fence. And you allow what God's trying to do in. You allow the word of God to come in. You allow the Holy Spirit to come in. You allow every good and perfect thing from the Lord to come in. And everything that comes against the word of God has to come out. But you are responsible with the gate. You are responsible with what comes in and comes out. You are responsible with what you let in and what you let out. In other words, sometimes here's the problem. People don't have standards. And if you want to create that gate, you've got to create a standard for your life. A standard that you will not lower. Because a lot of times what, what, what the problem with standards is we think standard means judgment. Oh, they're judging me. I'm, when I put a standard in my life, I'm, it's not because I'm judging you. It's because I know me. And I know what I'm worth. And I know what I bring to the table. And anything that comes against that, I can't have. Am I making sense this morning? Amen. You're getting me nervous here. And so we think standard is judgment. Oh, they're just... They're being judgy or, they, or, or man, they just, they think they're better than us. And, they, and all these things are happening instead of realizing that, no, I need a standard. Because if I don't have a standard, anything will come in and destroy what God's trying to do. I got to put a standard. I can't let everybody and everything come into my life and it come into my mind and come into my thoughts. I got to create the standard so that those things don't come and destroy what God's been trying to do in my life. Whether that's through people, through things, whatever that is, you create the standard and you lower it for nobody. That's how you guard your heart above all else. Above all else, create the standard in your life. You know what works best for you. You know what's healthy. Nobody knows you but you. No matter how much you've opened up your heart to other people, no matter how much you've been able to uh, 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 let people know how you've been, nobody knows you but you. Nobody knows what ticks you off. Nobody knows you what sets you off. Nobody knows you what makes you happy as much as you do. And nobody knows what destroys you as much as you do. Nobody knows. But if you can take a step back, and say, okay, this is what's been good for me. And every time I've raised my standard to this point, 
I do better in my life and my life is not as hazy and foggy and my life is not as, how, as bad as it is because I put this there. But every time I take it out, I go back to my old cycles. I go back to my old way of doing things, my old thought process, the way I used to do things. But that's why I'm here to encourage you to put it back. Put the standard back in your life. Put the fence up. Take down the wall and allow God to do a new thing. Can I tell you something? God is faithful. And he is faithful to transform your life. And he's faithful to break every curse that the enemy's been trying to put. God is the kind of God that will break through in your life. He will raise you up. He will raise you up from the dead. Amen? That's the kind of God we serve. A God that will do a new thing. He is faithful and he loves you enough. And he will send the Holy Spirit to remind you of who you are. Don't let the devil speak lies into your ear, into your heart, into your minds to make you you think less of yourself. And to make you lower yourself to please other people in your life. Because you think that that's the way to live. No, raise the standard. Guard your heart. Solomon, the wisest man after Jesus, to ever walk the earth, said, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Proverbs 4, 23. It determines the course of your life. You got a plan. You got purpose. You got a direction that you're trying to go to. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And in guarding your heart, create a divine rhythm for your life. Create a divine rhythm. Like I said, I'm not here to tell you to create, develop a new skill set. I'm here to remind you, you have to keep your soul. Jesus said it best. He said, what good is it to gain the whole world yet lose your soul? Does it make sense now when the word soul? What good is it to gain the whole world? What good is it? We've been taught in our culture today to keep our image and we don't keep our soul very well. We've been taught, man, keep your image. Make sure your image is good. And it's been drilled in our spirit for so long that before we realize that we're keeping our image but we're losing our soul. I got the image, I got the looks, I got the likes, I got the way people view me, I got all the things, but I am dying on the inside. And God came not for your image, but for your soul. Jesus didn't die so that you can have the best image. He died so that you can be saved, church, and resurrected and transformed and to find love and to live with the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't die for anything else. Those are preferences that humanity puts on people. And if we're not careful, church, we'll, create, we'll follow patterns of this world because we think that those patterns are what's going to fix what's happening on the inside. If I do steps one, two, and three, that the world tells me of the patterns, that's why Paul said in the book of Romans, he said, Do not copy the behaviors of this world or the patterns of the world, but renew your mind. Renew your mind. Make an effort, church, to watch and keep your soul. We have this culture that's this this grind culture all the time. I got to grind. I got to grind. I got to grind. I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to do. I got to do. I got to do. And the, rea- the problem with grind culture is that that's what God never meant for your life. This grind culture, before you know it, we have a bunch of workaholics and absent parents. Absent brothers and sisters. Absent people. And God never created you to be a workaholic. I'm not saying don't work, don't work hard, don't, don't try. No, 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 no. You need to work. You need to try. You need to develop. You need to build that business. You need to open, you know, try this degree. You need to do those things, church. But the problem with grind culture is that I put more effort in the grind than I do to myself. Where in the Gospels did we see Jesus running? Oh, wait. 
Where did Jesus run in the Gospels? Never. The Bible says he walked. He walked towards people. He walked with his purpose. He walked to heal people. He walked to preach the gospel. He walked to demonstrate. He walked. Never do we see Jesus anxious, running in a hurry, you know, stressed out. Jesus simply walked to his purpose and what God called him to do. You don't see him running. See, because that's very Adam-like. That's a very Adam-like nature to, to a very self-destructive, a very self, uh, um, a stressful way of living where you are fear-driven and not faith-driven. 